Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So, Kaldheim's spoiler season is nearing its end, and we've gotten a ton of great cards. Unfortunately, the recently spoiled Cosmos Elixir is not quite there. So, if you want to see my take on what could have been changed to make that card fantastic in Commander, make sure you check that Waste of Potential episode out. And I was up really early today, so make sure you check out my earliest episode if you haven't seen it yet on Bergy. Bergy is an absurd commander and perhaps the most broken commander of the set. Although I might be eating my words because I said that because of the commander for this episode. But before we get into that card, a quick spoiler warning. If you're not here to see Kaldheim spoilers, then you're in the wrong place. So maybe go check out the most powerful deck that I personally ever built with Joyra. But if you're here for the Kaldheim spoiler, then let's get into it. So with this brand new Kaldheim spoiler, Orvar, the all form, I had to do a triple take to make sure that I was reading it properly. Because I figured there's no possible way it does what I'm reading that it does. But here's the thing, it does. It's a 3-3 shapeshifter changeling that costs 3 and a blue. It says, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, if it targets one or more other permanents you control, create a token that's a copy of one of those permanents. Yes, you heard me correctly. Casting any insert or sorcery that targets a permanent you control copies it. It also says when a spell or ability an opponent controls causes you to discard this card, create a token that's a copy of target permanent. Now that probably won't come up in a game of commander, but if it does, neat. Regardless, that first part is insanely powerful. This essentially turns all of your instants and sorceries that target into clone spells. But instead of it just being like a regular clone that can only clone a creature, this can clone any of your permanents. So yeah, I might have misspoken earlier in the day when I said that Bergy was the most powerful commander from this set and that it's really broken because this one's also really broken and I don't know which one's more powerful. Perhaps at the end of the episode, I'll have my thoughts gathered and I can actually give you an answer to that. But at this point, I'm still just blown away by this card. There's one thing that's sad but kind of funny that I want to bring up first though. And that would be an incredibly similar card to this one. To all of you Misform Ultimus fans out there, I am so sorry. This commander is literally just a strict upgrade. It even has the exact same power, toughness, and mana cost just to rub it in. And that changeling part that's on this commander probably doesn't even matter for the actual deck that you're gonna build around it. It's just kind of thrown on there to add insult to injury. So again, to all those Misform Ultimus fans out there, I am very sorry. Regardless, how we're gonna build around this commander is incredibly simple. We're gonna put a ton of instants and sorceries in our deck that target permanents. It's that simple. So if it costs one mana and it says target permanent, you might want it in this deck. So some ones you might wanna consider are Dreams Grip, Thermal Flux, and Moonlace. Dreams Grip says choose one, tap target permanent or untap target permanent. So usually if you're targeting your own thing, you're probably gonna say untap. Regardless, no matter what you target, you get a copy of it. Or how about Thermal Flux? Target non-snow permanent becomes snow until end of turn, or target snow permanent isn't snow until end of turn. It really doesn't matter if you're changing something into snow or not snow, what matters is that you're copying it for one mana. Oh, and as a nice little bonus, you get to draw a card at the beginning of the next upkeep. Even a card like Moonlace, which is basically useless anywhere else, is incredibly effective in this deck. It says target spell or permanent becomes colorless. Again, we don't care that our permanent's colorless, we just care that we copied it for one mana. So with this deck, we can easily copy one of our creatures or artifacts, enchantments, a planeswalker, or even a land. That's right, this mono blue commander is going to be more effective at ramping than pretty much any green commander out there. So yeah, you're probably going to want to include Aquatex Will in this deck. It's going to put a flood counter on target land. Now the fact that that land is now an island really doesn't matter. In fact, most of the time we're probably just going to be targeting an island with this. What matters is that we just paid one mana and we got a copy of that land. Rampant growth, eat your heart out. 
But yes, the more flexible our targeting spell is, the better for this deck. So even targeting spells that cost one and have somewhat of a negative effect, we're still going to want to include. For example, Giga Drow says tap target permanent. Paying one mana and tapping something is a small price to pay for getting a copy of it. And for protection purposes, we can even include cards in this deck like Rescue. It's an instant for a blue and it says return target permanent you control back to its owner's hand. So if someone targets one of our important things, we bounce it back to our hand and guess what? We're also getting a copy of it. All for just one mana. Again, I want to stress that we're basically just cloning whatever we want for one mana. This is absurd. Now, of course, you're going to have a little more flexibility when it comes to spells that actually target creatures. And there are a ton of powerful things that we can do by creating copies of creatures for cheap. So in this deck, we're also going to include cards like Cerulean Wisps, Leap, and Fleeting Distraction. Each of these are one mana cantrips that have different effects. Cerulean Wisp says target creature becomes blue until end of turn, untap that creature. Leap is going to give target creature flying until end of turn. And Fleeting Distraction is actually going to give one of our creatures minus one minus zero until end of turn. Again, whether it's a positive or negative effect, it really doesn't matter. For one mana instant speed, we create a copy of target creature and we draw a card. That's easily worth that creature getting minus one minus zero until end of turn. And cards like Distortion Strike, which we can essentially cast twice, can be especially effective in this deck. It says target creature gets plus one plus zero until end of turn and it can't be blocked this turn. And it has rebound, so if we cast this spell from our hand, we exile as it resolves and at the beginning of our next upkeep, we can cast this card from exile without paying its mana cost. So for one mana over two turns, we essentially copy a creature twice. This can get especially out of hand with a buyback card like Whim of Volrath. The card's effect literally does nothing for this deck. It says change the text of target permanent by replacing all instances of one color with another or one basic land type with another until end of turn. That doesn't matter, and yes, we can still target the thing even if it does nothing. What matters is that this targets for one mana and it's got buyback too. So if we pay an extra two mana as we cast this spell, it comes right back to our hand after it resolves. And again, this can target any of our permanents. So essentially, pay three mana, copy something. Pay another three mana, copy something. Pay another three mana, copy something. We're never going to run out. And if you're copying your lands, you're basically getting one mana of that back, and you can just keep doing it a lot in a turn. But there are plenty of other great targets when it comes to wanting to copy something. And of course, there is one that immediately came to mind, and there are a couple of cards that can combo with it in this deck. And that card is, of course, Paragon Drake. It's a 2-3 Drake with flying that costs 4 and a blue, but when it enters the battlefield, we untap up to 5 lands. So with any of our 1 mana target spells, we're essentially netting 4 mana. And if we've got a target spell that has buyback, yeah, this goes infinite. And yes, I know Paragon Drake is a very broken card in a lot of decks, but it seems obscenely broken in this one. Another card to consider is, of course, our Kaomancer. When it enters the battlefield, you return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. So if you've got one of those target spells that can trip, congratulations, you can keep casting that as many times as you want. Another great option is the always lovely Diluvian Primordial. When it enters the battlefield for each opponent, you may cast up to one target instant or sorcery card from that player's graveyard without paying its mana cost, and if a card casts this way, we put into graveyard this way, exile it instead. So for one mana, you get a 5-5 flyer, and you cast three things. And hopefully for your opponent's sake, they don't have any targeting spells in their own graveyard. Or how about everyone's favorite, Agent of Treachery? For a 1 mana target spell, you get to clone this, and then you get to steal a permanent when that clone comes into play. And then at the beginning of your end step, if you control 3 or more permanents you don't own, which you're going to, you draw 3 cards. Per each Agent of Treachery. Seems pretty powerful. And then keep in mind with this and other theft effects, now we can start copying our opponent's thing that we just stole. Anyways, now let's move on to one of my personal favorites with Tidespout Tyrant. It says whenever you cast a spell, return target permanent to its owner's hand. So the more Tidespout Tyrants that we have in play, the more triggers that we get. And again, this deck's going to be casting a ton of spells. So say that we've got five of these in play, we cast a spell, let's create another copy, and we can bounce five things. Yeah, our opponent's permanents, including their lands, aren't going to last very long. But my favorite thing to target in this deck has got to be Coveted Jewel. This is a high-risk, high-reward play that can cost you the game, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Coveted Jewel is an artifact that costs 6, and when it enters the battlefield, you draw 3 cards. And on top of that, by tapping it, you add 3 mana of any one color. But whenever one or more creatures and opponent controls attacks you and aren't blocked, that player draws 3 cards and gains control of Coveted Jewel, untap it. So you tap this for 3 blue, and you cast a 1-mana target permanent spell. You create a copy of this, you draw 3 cards, you tap that for 3 more mana. You cast another one, and you see where this is going. But again, it's a high-risk, high-reward play. Because if your opponents stop you, and then they attack you, they're stealing your coveted jewels. All of them. That player that swings at you with an unblocked creature is going to draw an absurd amount of cards and have a crazy amount of mana. And that's exactly why it's my favorite interaction in this deck. A big payoff, but also a potential big loss. 
But with all that said, what is my gut feeling on this commander? This commander is absurdly powerful, allowing you to do things that you really shouldn't be able to do. Making a copy of one of your lands for one mana is absurd. Again, Rampant Growth is a staple for a reason, and this turns all of your one mana target permanent spells into something that is much better than that. Now, I've had some time to think about if this commander is actually more powerful than Bergy, though. And here's my conclusion on the matter. If you've got a fully tuned deck built around each of these, Bergy is going to be more powerful. The storm potential for that commander is just absurd, and that deck can even win on turn one. That being said, this commander is pretty busted as well. It might not be as broken as Bergy, but I've got a feeling that this one is going to be a lot more popular. I can see a lot of players out there being really intrigued with this commander and wanting to build a very powerful deck around it. Again, there's a lot of funny and crazy things that you can do this commander like Coveted Jewel. And that's just scratching the surface on the potential of this commander. And again, for all you Mistform Ultimus fans out there, I am sorry. And with that, the show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again, and have a good one.